how are you? I hope you are having a good time. So what are we going to do today? So the thing that we are going to do today is actually to cover on the topic of feasibility analysis and what can it do for you as a person, as a business owner or as an entrepreneur. So when you want to talk about feasibility analysis, it's about trying to evaluate your business idea before you actually commit to something in terms of services or product. So, why do you create or do feasibility analysis? The first thing is actually to evaluate, like I said, and to see earlier on whether the business idea can work for you or for your business venture. And the reason behind this is actually to reduce the amount of resources that you use in order to test this product or to actually bring this product out into the market. Because why? If, for example, you create a product and you think that that product actually is the thing that people want without a feasibility analysis, and then along the way, you spend a lot of resources on it, what happens? You have wasted your resources if that product is not successful at all. So, feasibility analysis is all about making sure that you do the right thing before you commit to something in terms of product or services. So, there are multiple forms of feasible and feasibility analysis. The first one is product or service feasibility. What does it mean? The first thing that you have to remember is that whether your product makes sense. What does it mean that it makes sense? A lot of entrepreneurs actually face this. What they do is that they build the product and they thought that those products are what people actually want to buy. But when they put the product into the market, they found out that actually the product is not what people want or need. Therefore, when you talk about product feasibility, it's about talking about whether your product is what people need. So people will buy it. And how do you do it? You survey, you ask around, is my product really, really breathtaking? groundbreaking or whatever you want it to be and see whether people will accept that product as it is or would people buy it and so on. That's why product feasibility is a very first important step that you should do. That's why you do gumshoe investigate it or what you can call it is gumshoe research. You investigate, you ask around, you ask people, your father, your mother, your friends. Or you can do an online survey regarding what do people do? What do people want? What kind of problems are they facing? And what kind of solution can you bring with your product? If, for example, your product is not in that line, maybe you should rethink accordingly to what you are good at and make that product as a reality. Another form of feasibility analysis is actually industrial feasibility. To see whether the industry that you are entering is feasible enough for you and your business venture. Whether it can bring forth that product and ensure that your product can survive in that industry. For example, when you talk about feasibility in the analysis in an industry, it's about making sure that the industry you are in is not too big enough, is good enough to be something new, but there's not a lot of big competitors that is actually there. Why? Because you have to remember, when you start an entrepreneurial venture, you are actually small. You are not that big. There are some people who start an entrepreneurial venture big, but remember, most of you will end up doing it small first. And to ensure that there is sustainability for your entrepreneurship venture, you must be able to at least know whether the industry or the target market that you are seeking for exists. And to ensure also at the same time, the industry itself is healthy. It's not too big. For example, when you look at the smartphone market, and you notice that the smartphone market is quite of a big industry. It's quite lucrative, but it's oversaturated. There are a lot of offerings out there that you can't compete with. So as an entrepreneur, should you enter the smartphone market? If you are just new, you're just someone very, very new in the market, therefore, when you want to enter the market, you will start doing price war. And that is actually one of the steps to not have a good sustainability. Why? When you do price war, how long can you maintain such a low price in order to create more innovation? That's why before you enter the market, look at the industry itself. Is there opportunity for you? Is there a gap in that market that people are not offering? Do you have the resources to enter that market? 
and so on. And that's why when we move on to the next feasibility, with another form of feasibility is organizational feasibility. What does it mean what by organizational feasibility? Organizational feasibility means that whether your organization has the enough expertise to do that or whether it has organizational competence to do that product or services that you want. For example, if you are a bunch of engineers and you are trying to put accounting services out there, could you actually do it? Do you have the expertise to do it? Or do you have to hire? Or do you have the resources or capacity to hire? Those are the things that you have to think when you are trying for a new venture. It must be possible in your way. Because if it's not possible in any way for you or your organization, it can collapse immediately. Why? Like I said about the engineer, if you are trying to do an accounting services and you do not know accounting at all, how, the, how would you actually implement accounting services into a part of your system or your platform? You would have confusion or your product that you actually proceed or proceed with will not be of any quality and it can be a detrimental thing to your entrepreneurial venture. Therefore, when you look at everything, you notice that there is another criteria which is financial feasibility. Financial feasibility is more on the finance itself. Like I say, when you have to outsource because of your, the lack of organizational feasibility, you will have to actually, what? You would have to actually increase more resources. You have to find more financing and so on. And in, when you look at it, can you actually get those finances? Do you have the capital to do it? Because if you don't have the capital to do it, then your product or your service is not sustainable. And this can cause more problems as you go on in the future for your company or your entrepreneurial venture. So, looking at feasibility analysis, always remember this. Look at the example of certain products where they did a feasibility, a feasibility analysis is questionable. Let's take an example of Microsoft Kin. Microsoft Kin was actually a good product, a good idea to be perceived and put into the market. But once it goes into the market, the competency of that product was not met at all. So question was, what did Microsoft actually did feasibility analysis on whether people wanted it? And, but maybe a lot of people think that they did. But the problem was that when they tapped the industry, the industry was too small. Social phones. As you look at smartphones nowadays, you look at it and you notice that all smartphones are now built for social capacity or capability. But Microsoft came as it was innovating, it was great that it was actually doing all those things, did not have enough of a target market. So did it, was there actually any target market feasibility? Those are the questions that we have when you look at all these great products out there that fails along the way. You can see regarding Coursera, when they did that dual screen uh, smartphones, it was a failure. In terms of technology, it was breathtaking. You have dual screen for your smartphone and it works seamlessly. But when they actually came out to the market, people were not keen to having two screens at all. Maybe because the reason behind it, they did not test whether the product feasibility was good enough in a way that making dual screen actually increased the bulkiness of the product itself. So when you look at a lot of things, feasibility analysis is a very important core in any entrepreneurial venture as it helps a lot with making that product happen, making that service happen for you, and ensure that you will not waste a lot of resources regarding it. So, I hope you have a very good evening. Um, I don't think so, it's evening. I hope you have a very good day, and I hope that this video will be able to help you in the long run on whether you will understand, or will you, when you do your entrepreneurial venture, you will understand better what is a feasibility analysis? Thank you very much. I hope to see you again. Thank you.